Hey, my name's Matt, and I am a part of our Merchant Success team here at Rebuy, and today I'm going to be talking about A-B testing specifically in the post-purchase. Now, this graphic is actually a small part of our ultimate guide to A-B testing, which we'll link below in all the right places, and that is going to give you a bunch of different ideas and how-tos on how to A-B test, and today we're just going to be talking about the post-purchase. So by now, you have probably identified your problem and created a hypothesis as to how to solve it. Developing multiple versions of this is going to come in the form of creating different widgets. And today we're going to cover numbers four and five. So how we set this up within Rebuy is as follows. Okay, so I've just come into Rebuy and set up a new post-purchase flow. And I have corresponding widgets that are going to allow me to test the behavior that I want against itself. So I've got two widgets. One is a buy one, get one. If anything, return the input product at 25% off. The other one that I'm testing it against is a buy one, get one at 50% off. So very similar data source, very similar widget. The only difference here is one is going to be 25% off, one is going to be 50% off. Very interesting to see what the difference in conversion rate is, what the revenue per user is very valuable test, one that can be run at any stage of this post-purchase funnel. The only thing that I will say is if we have upsells and downsells and A-B tests that are later on in the post-purchase flow, so if I were to zoom out here, I've got a, an A-B test for an upsell and a downsell. Now, the only thing to consider there is we will not see either of these upsells or downsell offers if we do not match to the initial offer. So you're going to want to make sure that your initial offer is universal. That is something that everybody can match to. And then based on whether they accept or decline that offer, we're going to show them more down the journey. So if we zoom out here, we're actually running the same widgets in our upsell test and our downsell test. Now, this is an awful lot to be testing at one time. But what I've done here is I haven't changed all too much in terms of the difference between my A and my B of all of my tests. So what I've got here is the mystery gift with block. So this is a widget that I built in a previous video. And this is that same widget minus all of the blocks that make it look uh, really nice. So I think that's a very interesting test to see the difference in performance of a widget that does and does not have a block. And then my last set of tests are my Downsell of my initial test. So this whole row here, I'm testing two widgets against one another. Both are discounted gift cards. One is discounted 10% off, one is discounted 20% off. So what I've done here, this is mostly a test where I'm comparing very similar inputs and very slightly different outputs in the sense that all of these tests are showing basically the same things. Here, we're just changing the discount amount or the design elements of it. So when you're A-B testing, I recommend having very slight variations to find out what is the better of your two offers. If you're between 20 and 30% discounts, if you're between AI recommendations at a discount or similar product recommendations at a discount, returning buy one, get one. These are great things to find out. And I think A-B testing is a fantastic way to refine your ideas. But this can also be a little bit more radical in the sense that we can have a mystery gift with a block when this becomes our winner test against a buy one, get one at 25% off. These are all things that we can test and you've got the keys and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks for watching.